You know, I've always thought about doing an improv class because I find myself to be extremely funny. But then I'm like, why would I take an improv class? I'm already funny. But the people I know who have taken an improv class are probably much more funny than me and also have learned a key piece of advice. When you learn to improvise with people, if you're putting on a show or doing some sort of comedy, the key to success is to remember that the people you're in it with are going to say some weird stuff that you weren't thinking of at some point. And at that moment, whatever they say, whether you like it or not, you need to think the phrase, yes, and. You may have heard this phrase before, yes and. We've heard it a lot flippantly. This is sort of its origin, but what is the point of it? The point is, if you try to stop what's happening in the moment, especially if you're on stage improvising for an audience and try to change it or rework the story, it gets confusing. There's friction and you're going to be better off to just take whatever you're given, get the hand you're dealt and play it. So whatever is said, whatever story is being told, whatever role you are being introduced as, yes. And this is great advice. This is well known in the improv community amongst actors and comedians. And if you've had this training and you take it into other areas of your life, it's amazing. Whether you're in sales or management or having a family, yes and can be very powerful. But we don't live in a world where we get lots of real yeses. Actually, they're few and far between. So if you can think of something you're a little bit nervous about, think of something in your life that you want, think of something that you'd like to ask for, think of something that you don't have that you wish to achieve and you go through the motions in your mind that if this were improv, they might say yes and, but in the real world, they'll probably say no. It stops us from making the request. It stops us from wanting the thing. It stops us from asking altogether. And when we don't ask for what we want, we don't get it. It's really simple. Nobody can read our minds. We can't get what we want if we don't ask for it. And so we must ask for it. But first we need to get over this fear of not hearing the word yes and instead hearing the word no. And that is why I wanted to share this idea with you today because I think this is going to solve all of your concerns as it comes to disappointment. Why are we so unhappy? Why are we so upset? Why are we all complaining? Why is life so crap when we are the most technologically advanced? We have the most ways to make money in the world. We have so many opportunities amongst us and we are not living our best life. Why? Because of disappointment. We're disappointed all the time. What are we disappointed about? We're disappointed about things that haven't even happened. We worry and we pontificate and we stress and we're unhappy instead of living in the moment. And part of that is because we're afraid to ask for what we want because we might hear the answer that would keep us from that. So in order to stop feeling disappointed, so for us to stop anticipating disappointment that hasn't even happened yet, we have to change the story. We have to think yes and, but in this case, it is a different idea. It is even better than yes and. It is no and. That's right. The key to all your problems with disappointment, the key to all your stress, the key to all of this is to stop worrying about getting the yes and look forward to getting the no. That's ridiculous, Amy. Why on God's green earth would I want a no for something that I want? I'll tell you why. The reason why we hear no is that somebody thinks they already know what your ulterior motives are. They think that you're asking for something selfishly. They think that you don't have a leg to stand on. They probably think you're crazy. So they tell you no, but that's not the point. When someone says no, it's because they haven't seen the full picture. When someone says no, you haven't given them the full picture. You haven't painted all sides to this. They were not told yes and. If I say yes and I get more, I get better, I get to see a greater result than just what is asked of me here. In improv, that's well known. In real life, we assume the worst. You have to assume the worst because you have to assume the person you're gonna ask is gonna assume the worst. And that is something we can work with. Instead of being caught off guard, instead of being disappointed, we can use this information. So your key to defeating all disappointment is to say, I am going in and I am going to get a no. I am looking forward to that. Why? Because there's something on the other side of it. When you ask for something, when you want something, when you need 
something, ask and get to the no. Because what happens is you are going to anticipate it. You're not gonna be caught off guard. You're not gonna be disappointed. In fact, you're gonna be proven right, which lots of us love. And then you're going to ask why. You may not even have to ask, by the way. Lots of people like to follow the word no with tons of reasons as to why it's a no. You're just waiting for them to word vomit all of that information onto you. Because if this thing actually matters to you, if this is really important to you, if this is going to change your life, if this is the life you want, and the answer right now is no, we need more information. Because if we're lucky enough to get another day tomorrow, then we can continue to work on that. But without that information, we really have nothing to go on. You can't get that information if you don't ask. You can't get that information if you're afraid. You can't get that information if you don't try. Get the information. Get the information. Resourcefulness, the number one skill in the world. You think it's something you need to go get a degree for and have it written on a piece of paper. Actually, the most valued skill in the world is resourcefulness. The person that decides they're going to research something, the person that says, I'll Google it, the person that says, I'm gonna at least ask. I'm gonna look stupid and have somebody give me the answer because I wanna hear what somebody else says. Maybe the answer is different than it was yesterday. That should be interesting. Get the information. So forget yes and no. And what? What is on the other side of that no? What do we need to know beyond the no? Can you imagine just living a life of disappointment and never having more information than that? That is nothing but a fictional story that you're choosing to live in. And it's not even a fairy tale. It's literally just a crappy story that you have resided in, in your mind. So let's change the story by getting more information. Let's flesh out the scene here. What is the screen in your mind? I love that Wayne Dyer talks about the screen in your mind. You get to play whatever you want on that screen. You get to pick, nobody's picking that programming. Nobody put Netflix on for you. You get the screen, you get to pick. What is the screen in your mind? And if you wanna flesh it out a little bit further, why don't we go ask the real world what the answer to your question is, what the way to getting what you want is, because that information is what is going to get you to another level of understanding in your mind. Right now, you only know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. Start finding out. What don't you know? The no and approach is the number one way to defeat your disappointment because your disappointment is going to pale in comparison to all of the new information that you have that you have to work with, that your mind has been craving because all you've been doing is sitting on the same thoughts and ideas, which is ultimately not making you smarter, not making you more resourceful, not making you more successful, it's just making you the same person. Time is moving forward and you're still the same. So if it looks like everyone else is speeding past you, all they're doing is getting way more no's than you. How many no's? have you had lately? If you can count a lot, good. But did you just get a no and tune out? That's not no and. That's no, I'm out. That's no, I quit. That's no, that must be how my life story is meant to be told because I don't know anything better and I choose not to. No and is I know that no is temporary. I know that things could change tomorrow. And so when someone tells me the answer is no, I can have more information, I can work with that. You expect the no, low expectations, low expectations. Everyone thinks I'm crazy when I say this, I get it, it sounds crazy to have low expectations, but I have high standards. I have very high standards. I have low expectations and I have very high standards. Why is that? How is that? The answer, expectations are on the outside world. Expectations are on the driver next to me not running into me and getting distracted and, and hitting my car. That's an expectation. But my standard of driving is set by me. How I drive, how I move, how I park, how I pay attention, how I don't look at my phone. My standards are on me. My standards are to what I uphold, the person I want to be, who I am trying to become. What ultimately happens is high expectations are what have been disappointing you and then when you have low expectations instead, high standards, low expectations, you go from being disappointed all the time to pleasantly surprised. I am pleasantly surprised because I walked in there and I asked for a promotion and I was waiting for the no so I could figure out, okay, next steps. What do I need to do to improve? What do I do from A to B to get to that next level? And I walked in there fully expecting to get the no and I got a, yeah, I think we could do that. Pleasantly surprised. The yeses are sweeter. The yeses 
are not as impossible. The yeses are not a mistake because you did your part to get there. So if you want to solve for disappointment, this is simple. No and. People throw no's around like they're going out of style. So get that no, get that, collect it. Oh, got another one, got another one. Now tell me more about why that's a no. Unpack that. What are you going through? What did you think when I said that? Did you think something else? Do we, are we on the same page? What's another take? What's another way? What's a better way? How could I make this worth your while? How could I make this more of a mutually beneficial idea? No and. So to my improv friends, I love you for yes and. It has inspired me so much because when you get yes and people, you are blessed. It's amazing. Incredible collaboration can happen. It's not always going to happen. You can't have high expectations. You can't expect everybody to be on stage with you and say yes to everything that you say, but you can expect them to say yes or no, and you can deal with it either way. And because you decide that the valuable thing here is not the yes, it is the information you'll go looking for it every time. Never disappointed, <laughs> ever. If you found this helpful, I really would love to help inspire you every morning to start the day on your terms. I just put out a new book. It is called 365 Days of Good Morning, Good Life. One page every morning for a mindful moment to start the day on your terms and go after the life you want. Link in the description below. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love and go after the life you want. Cheers.